Well, let's go ahead and get ourselves started for today. We have a couple different things we want to accomplish. Okay, we're going to like to take some general questions about the assignment because some people have some just sort of very similar uh, problems and it'd be nice to go ahead and share some of the wisdom with everyone. Um, in terms of the assignment, there are a lot of different things available that you should know about to help you sort of uh, get some help where you need it and uh, get things completed. You should know that we've done a couple different things. Okay, one is based on the uh, kind of experiment with the ex uh, just recording the videos, that seems to be working successfully. So you will now find on the coursework website uh, videos from the previous class sessions. So we will put the ones up from today and kind of keep on putting them up there. So you can download these things, you can watch them on your iPod or your phone or your iPad or your computer, whatever really sort of is the preferred format, or even subscribe to them as podcasts because I certainly, yeah, who wouldn't want to listen to this like as you're driving to work every day? <laughs> so uh, go ahead and take advantage of that stuff. That'll be available. There is on the schedule section of the site a listing of, uh, it's just, we're going to try and keep track of when the office hours and guidance hours are going to be there. So for example, this evening after class, I'll be around until actually 9 o'clock tonight. From 5 to 7 we'll be hanging around, but we can't actually be in this room from 6 to 7 just because the MATLAB, se lab sections scheduled in here. So we have to take a little bit of break there, but we'll be still be around. So there's hours tonight. Tomorrow all afternoon, starting at 12.30 all the way through 6.30, there's hours. And again, on Thursday night, there's some hours. So there should be plenty of time to come in and get your questions answered and get going with it. What else did I want to tell you about? Another resource? Yes, sir. About the video, Glenn, do we need QuickTime to do that? You will need, actually, they're MPEG-4 files. So I, I th download it instead of uh, streaming with the QuickTime. Yeah? And just download one megabyte and it's uh, huh. and it. Because they're big, they're like 220 megabytes for the full class session. It's quite big. So I think it'll play in other formats like Windows Media Player or something like that. Aaron, have you had, you had some experience with it? No. It's a, I don't know, let's try it. It definitely plays in QuickTime, but I think it'll play in other formats too. But we should experiment a little bit. Like, were you trying to play them on your computer or on, uh, yeah. It should be okay. I think, well, we'll, we'll play. Well, there you, well, you told me you were going to sample me. In the <laughs> That's just sad. Uh-oh. <laughs> the, the, the pressure's on now. No, no, no. I was actually talking about my oh, oh, that instead. Well, that's much better. <laughs> spend, spend your time there, please. Okay, another thing we want to let you know about is as we're getting different email questions, I keep on posting answers to those things. Not only do I share them with you directly, but I put them on the uh, coursework website as like uh, answers. I, I sort of you know, discreetly hide your name and kind of generalize the question so no one will know it really is your specific question. <laughs> But uh, they're all out there, and we're just going to keep on doing things. For example, a real common question people have had is about the, the square footage limitation. A couple things to know about the square footage. As we think about this 18 to 2200 square foot, it's this living area. Okay, So you don't really need to include patios or walkways or garages or things that aren't enclosed and conditioned. So if it's air conditioned or heated, okay, that you include. If it's not, then you don't have to include it. Okay. And the number is actually for the total house. It's not just a single floor. So your total budget for the entire house is about 1,800 to 2,200. Okay. That other thing, if we and we do measure that other thing sometimes, which is just sort of how much is one floor. We call that the building footprint. Okay. And some planning departments like to think about that because they don't want you to have too much footprint, but they also don't want you to have too much volume. Okay. A uh, nuance of that is some people were asking about, do you have to count the stairways? Generally, stairs do count against your square footage, but you only have to count them once. Okay, so yeah, you don't have to sort of in, you know double penalize yourself because chances are the second part of the stairway is a big open space and you're not really using it as a livable area. But for our purposes, again, no one's really going to go through and measure that last inch and kind of really make sure you're right at you know 2,157 square feet. Yeah, when you actually submit things for planning and building approvals, they actually do care about that stuff. So you prepare a lot of schedules and reports to demonstrate that you haven't exceeded the boundary of what you're allowed to build up for your site. Okay, but for yeah, we're pretty loose about it here. Again, for the assignment, I'm more concerned than anything about a yeah, because yeah, it's not the quality of your design. Because some of you do some pretty fantastic designs, and it's hard to keep up with those Joneses because they're doing some really nice things and putting a lot of hours in. Yes, I'm looking at some now. We do really nice work, but 
you don't have to kind of keep up with them. Yeah, yes, as long as you are designing something and using the model to very effectively communicate you know, what you're trying to design, get your design intent, as intent across, that's our purpose. So we're not judging your architectural quality, we're judging you just in terms of how well you're using the building modeling tools. Okay, let's go ahead and any general questions? Yes? So we're gonna cover that, uh, What's up? Patios and decks and what it looks like and then ah. That's, in general, I would say that decks and floors are really very, very similar. They just have sort of a different material on the top. Okay, posts to support a deck, think of those as being columns, just those like uh, architectural columns, and you'll find timber ones that are four by four, six by six. So you can actually put a floor in there and then make it look like columns. And exactly, to support it. That's okay, eventually, you know, we all know that you'd have, you'd have to put some beams in there to support it too. For right now, even in that sandwich of the deck material, if we say that sandwich is 10 inches or 12 inches, that's probably thick enough to accommodate the depth that would be necessary for the beams and the joists and some of the structural members. But if we'll get to sort of modeling structural elements in a little more detail. But for now, get them out there, make sure they have railings so people aren't falling off the edges, things like that. Okay, any other generals? Yes, sir. If, if we want to use the, the, the contour, Yes. Even if we make a large pad, somehow our first floor would be below the dirt layer. Huh. That's actually quite common. And uh, do you want us to design like that? I mean, actually, no. You can go either way. It's it's quite fine if you want to have a lower level that is above the dirt. That is super. You'll just have to put a little foundation around the edge of it so it's not floating on air. So you put some little concrete walls around the edge to support that lower level. Okay. Or if you want to sort of try cutting in and recessing a little bit and using the earth, you know, that's okay too. You know, I tend to, when I get a hillside site, I'll try to cut in a little bit and kind of keep the earth, you know, the house sort of hugged down into the earth. But it's really a design decision. You know, so it's okay to do it either way. Oh, yes. Oh, please. No, no. Feel free. I have heard all sorts of strange things people are doing to my topography, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, feel free to kind of, again, it's, it's just um, it's just to kind of give you something to design against. So if you have something in mind and you need a very steep slide site or something that's a little bit flatter or something that has a hill to it and a valley, feel free to do that. So essentially, you want us to design a two-story building, this is fair, right? Um, because if I think that topography for something which is like a hilltop, so I can have views on, on both sides and windows on both levels and wouldn't consider them as a lower level or a basement. Yeah. And that would change the your topography. I understand. How about, don't change it so much. Like, go ahead and try and do something two stories because we do want you to sort of have the experience of putting in the stairs and yeah, the, you know, that. Yeah, but, but whether you're sort of hugging off the side of the hill or whether you're at the crown of the hill, that could be okay. okay. Yeah, so you can do it that way. And yeah, if you want a 360 view. Yeah, and one side is just like the windows almost pointing towards the dirt or the back of the house. Yeah, well, it's, it's always, it's a trick to how to design those sites because it's, you yeah, there's, know, there's, you can make that a nice experience. It's funny, sometimes being at the very crest of the hill is not so good because then when the wind is blowing through, you know, it's, it's almost being too exposed. But there's definitely pluses and minuses. But yeah, feel free to sort of express your architectural intent, you know, freely. Yeah, and yeah, whatever. If, if you come up with something innovative and different, that's okay. We, we, we applaud innovation in this class. Okay, any other good generals? Nope, okay. Let's go ahead and dive on in. What we want to show you is, we're going to go back to this issue of views and kind of working with views a little bit, okay? And what I want to do is really, I would just start with this whole notion of that you have the ability to create lots of different types of views, and that you should go ahead and create views that are going to best illustrate your design. Okay, hang on here. Pardon me. Okay, so as we're thinking about our different views and the things that we are going to present, it all starts with the notion of really what it is you're trying to illustrate. And early on, often, we're just trying to show to our clients, you know, is this design going to meet the requirements they've laid out? Is it going to feel comfortable to them? You know, is it possible to build? We often start with these sort of very early questions, and in response to those questions, 
you know, they're going to be looking for some specific things to help prove to them or help them understand the model. You know, the floor plans and the elevations are typically good. Very often when we're working with our clients, we have to put little notes or tags to help explain things because to us, all these lines and boxes in the model represent something, but it may not be so clear to them. And it's very, very helpful to put the notes. Often clients are very embarrassed. No one likes to admit that they don't know what that big box means. Okay, so better to go ahead and give them a little bit of help. You know, what's the problem with an extra little text label on the drawing? You know, if you think it might be, hel if it might be helpful, put it in. Okay, in terms of making it easier for them to understand. We're going to talk today about putting dimensions on the drawings to help you really understand the sizes and report those sizes to people. And as we go further on down, you know, through the process, we eventually would get into sort of tabulating the areas in a little more detail so we could report it to planning, kind of showing the heights and the elevations to make sure we're not blocking anyone's daylight planes. We'll add more information, but there is a certain set of information we need to add to our model now just to kind of complete it so that people can really understand what we're proposing. Okay, as we present these model views, again, I want you to think about really the views that are going to best represent the model. Don't just go ahead and think that you have to put you know, all 35 views from every different perspective in there. You know, there's always going to be a few views and very well composed images that really convey the essence of it. You, know, you don't have to be exhaustive up front. In fact, being exhaustive may be counterintuitive or counterproductive because if you overwhelm people with too much information, they sort of lose sight of what's important. Okay, so better to have fewer views stressing what you want them to pay attention to. You know, honestly, for this first review, yeah, they probably don't care so much about the carport and the storage room. You know, they're, care they're probably thinking about that fantastic entertainment space and the fireplace and the kitchen and the view, you know, things like that. So focus your energy really where you're going to get the most uh, bang for it up front. Okay, in terms of creating these different views, we're going to use the same basic procedure for all the different view types. So I want you to start to think about this as really being a very organized and systematic approach where we always start by placing a camera somewhere in the model. We have a 3D model, internally consistent. <laughs> is it a question? It is a question. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The question is, I'm going to repeat it for the people on on video, yeah, how important is it that it's a north, south, east, or west orthogonal elevation? Can you cut an elevation at a different angle? And yeah, cut the elevation at whatever angle makes the most sense for your building. So if you rotated the building at some angle, cut an elevation that makes sense there. Yeah, that whole thing of north, east, west, south, it's, it's totally arbitrary. Yeah, in terms, yeah, so if you're rotated, rotate the elevations. Yes, Jacob. Sections, and sections too. Really, you know, cut them in whatever angle. You know, nothing says the world's all at these 90 degree north south elevations. If you're 45 or 30, 60 or whatever it is, go ahead and like uh, just rotate those things. Again, you know, do the view that explains it best. You know, it's it's really yeah. The truth is, very few buildings actually are northeast, west, and south. You know, so don't go ahead and like uh, don't don't get enslaved by that. Okay, so you're going to take each of the different views. You're going to put a camera in there, and as we put the camera in there, there's a couple of big things you're always going to think about. You're going to think about where your eye is, where that camera is located, you know, where the actual cut is happening, but you're also going to learn to think about this issue of how deep are you looking. Okay, you know, when we're looking down, we're often looking to the floor below us, but when we're looking sideways, you know, there's a question, am I looking 100 feet away or am I working 500 feet away? Okay, and you can control that. Because if you want to get the big view, you may want to see the full 500 feet or infinitely into the distance. If I want to sort of focus on a detail that's relatively close, if I want to look at that wall, I only really care about the first 20 feet. I don't really care about what's happening beyond. Can So you want to start thinking about controlling that. After we set up our camera, there's the whole issue of filtering or highlighting the elements. The idea is the model shows all the different types of elements. It shows the structure. It shows the furniture, it shows the planting, it shows all these different things. And you may not want to show all that stuff in every view. So we can use visibility and graphics to either hide some of those elements or to feature some of those elements, depending on what you want. Okay, We're going to show you a little bit about adding annotations, dimensions, text, and tags to the drawings so that you can explain not only kind of the graphical form, but just give a little more explanation about what that really means. 
And then we're going to look at the final step in the process really is this whole thing about adjusting and enhancing the appearance, making sure it's cropped well, it has the right level of, of uh, detail, and it might be shaded or have some shadows. But it really is for each of the different type of views, for plans, for sections, for elevations, for 3D views, it's always those same, same four steps. Yeah. Set a camera, filter in the information you want, annotate it to expand the information, and then just really get the appearance to be just what you like. Okay, let's go ahead and just show you all that stuff in context, starting with plan views. And to do that, what I'm going to do is actually open up a little sample house that was uh, it's actually one of the Revit training tutorials. It's, uh, if you want to open it up and follow along, please feel free to. Or if you want to just work in your own model, that's okay too. What I'm going to do is go out to the L drive. For uh, me on this computer, it's a little bit different. It's the Q drive to me, but it's the same difference. I'll go down to my folder. And in the session seven, you'll actually find this getting started house. Again, you can work with this one or you can work with any model. It doesn't really matter. The principle is going to be the same. So let's let this one open up. The first thing we're going to start by doing is just talking about the plan views. Okay, I'm going to say OK to that. Someone else opened it up too. That's fine. I'm looking at the plan views. Let me go ahead and look at the plan view for level one. Just in looking at the level one plan view, let's just kind of take a look at what's included right now. You'll see in this view we have the walls, the windows, we have some uh, annotations on here, we have some dimensions which have been set up with some equality constraints. Okay, we also have oh, tags, tags on the doors, and we have tags on the windows, which are sort of referencing them back to different types of doors and windows, different sizes. And we can look at a schedule and see what's going on there. This view is a little bit strange in terms of what's going on in that it actually has something underlaid. It's hard to see on my big screen, probably looks better in the video, but there's actually gray lines versus kind of uh, full width lines or full darkness lines. And what those are, those are features of the second floor that I'm looking through and seeing. Now, views have this funny thing, a view property called the underlay. And if I turn that off, right now it's showing me level two. What you'll see will happen is, let me even show you here. There's this balcony, or it's a sort of, it's really an overhanging second floor projection. If I go through and turn that off, the underlay none, I'll say okay. That'll disappear. Okay, so watch out for that. Sometimes you're underlaying things. In general, underlays don't print. So you can work with them and leave them in place. When you print out your views and share them, they won't show up there. But underlays can confuse people. So if you're gonna share the view, you know, ah, this is a good case of where you may want to do this. Okay, a very common thing is to have two different versions of the plan view. One that has the underlays and the tags and all that information turned on to help you work, but then a second copy, which is going to be your presentation view, where you turn those things off. Okay, and that's a perfect starting point for where we might want to get going with this. If you start with the notion that you have a single level one view, you could duplicate that to create as many different views as you want showing different elements. So I have level one right now. I can click on the level one view, and if I right click, I can say duplicate the view. Duplicating allows me to either duplicate with detailing or without. Let me first go ahead and duplicate it without the detailing, show you what the difference is. Okay, detailing is gonna be all the annotations, the dimensions, the door markers, the window markers. If I say duplicate and I don't include the detailing, Notice the model elements come through, but none of the annotations come through. Okay, let me go ahead and name that one. Oh, I'm just gonna call that my, uh, I'm gonna rename it, call it my furniture plan. Okay, let me go back to level one again. Even though they're not showing up in the furniture plan view, those annotations are still there. If I duplicate this again, and this time I'll do it with detailing, okay, now I get a copy that includes all those annotations. Okay, and I'll call this my structural plan. Okay, and we can really create as many different copies of the first floor plan as we want to illustrate all of the different things we want. Yeah, every different sort of use and application. For example, let me go over to the furniture plan. On the furniture plan, maybe I want to 
go through and start placing some furniture in there. So I'll say, oh, this is this area that I think of as my little living room area. I will say, let's place some components. See what I have available in here. I know there's a desk in here. It's not a very good desk, but we'll put a desk in here. As I'm placing components, let me just kind of always throw little shortcuts at you. I can place that and then rotate it into place, or as I'm sort of hovering around and I haven't quite dropped it yet, if I hit the space bar, it'll rotate it. Okay, And that may be useful to you before you actually drop it in there. So you can space and do a rotate, or you can rotate after it gets into place. Either way. So I'm just going to shove that desk into place. Now I'm also going to go ahead and get another component. Let me, oh, let me load something. Oh, maybe out of the library I can get some furniture. I know they had some sofa that I liked out there. This Pensy sofa was kind of okay. Again, it sort of flipped backwards, so I'm going to rotate it. And I'll put a coffee table in front of it. Placing the component, I'll load another family furniture. Let me go down and get sort of a table, coffee. Okay, and I put those things in there. Okay, now I've been placing elements on my furniture plan. The furniture plan is a good place for them. They're actually in the model. If I go back to level one, okay, they're in the model there because they're currently showing all those elements. If I go to the structural plan, they're hanging around there too. Now, if I don't want these furniture elements to show up in my structural plan, what I'm going to do is the first time I'm going to filter. So to filter, what I do is go to View, Visibility Graphics, and I can take a look at all the different model categories and just turn off anything I don't want to see. So I'm just going to turn off the furniture. I don't care to see that right now. Okay. It'll disappear from the structural plan view, but it's still hanging around in the furniture plan view and the level one view. So Every view's visibility graphics overrides are completely independent. Okay, And you can really use that to your advantage because you can create a lot of different views that all have different settings, sometimes showing everything in the kitchen sink so that you can really manipulate all the objects. But when it comes time to present the views and share them with different people, maybe showing a subset instead. Okay, So floor plan views, the big issue is duplicate them. And generally, you right click on them and make new views happen. Let me kind of show you another variation on the theme, though. And that is, oh, this whole notion of you can also go ahead and create plan views using this floor plan tool, or plan view tool. And let me show you where that might be useful. By default, there are levels set up for, oh, over here in the project browser, there's floor plans set up for all the levels that were originally defined in the project. If it turns out that you want to add a level to the project and you want a floor plan at that level, okay. You can't just duplicate one of these. You're going to need to get it somewhere else. So let me show you what I mean. If I go over here and in, oh, where the elevations go? There they are. Currently, this little house is set up, so it has just a few levels. I'm going to create another level to it. I'll say it's a level. I'll drag on out. Level six sounds a little ambitious. I'll just make it, oh, level four. <coughs> Actually, it went through and created that for me. Darn it, it's ruining my example, because I wanted to go ahead and do that independently. But well, let me show you where you can still do it. No, I'll, I'll still go ahead with what I'm doing. In the View tab, there's this thing over here called the uh, Plan Tool. And when you want to create plans, you have the choice of either floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, plan regions, or area plans. This is going to talk about what each of those are good for. Floor plans are these plans where you're cutting through at four feet and looking down at the floor. Reflected ceiling plans are, again, cutting through at four, four feet but looking up at the ceiling so I can see the lighting fixtures, the sprinklers, the HVAC. Oh, what else can I see? Just anything that's up on the ceiling instead. Okay. The plan region, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. It's going to get to this whole notion of we have this view range, how deep we look. And every once in a while, where we're cutting and how deep we're looking, we want to change to show some special feature. Okay. And that's what plan region is going to come handy for in just a second. 
There's also something called an area plan. An area plan is just sort of a special type of plan that again sort of looks like a floor plan view, but it's really useful when you want to lay down lines and bound different areas that you're tabulating, okay? So you can go ahead and compute the area inside the building versus outside the building. It gives you sort of just a very quick way of defining areas and boundaries. And again, we'll play with that a little bit more later. But if we choose floor plan, you'll see, oh, currently it doesn't look like there's anything available. And that's because it says do not duplicate any of the existing views. If I turn that off, I can get to all the different floor levels. And now I can choose a scale and then create a view. No, oh, I want to create another one for level four. And there it is, just duplicated. And I can rename that. Oh, what do I want to call this? Okay, so I can create as many different views as I want to. Now, when you're creating views, the nice thing is, yeah, although you initially set a view uh, scale, you can continue to change that as much as you need to. So if you want to go through and kind of zoom in later, you can. In fact, another very common use is, let me show you. I'll come on over here. Oh, let's say in this first floor view, this area right in here. I actually sort of have in mind that's going to be a kitchen of some type. I'll put some cabinetry and things like that. At eighth scale, okay, that's probably going to be too small to see very much of the detail about the cabinetry and like uh, all the details that I might want to like feature. So what I can do is as follows. Let me go ahead and duplicate that view. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call that if I can spell properly. <laughs> Kitchen detail plan. Okay, the kitchen detail plan. I'll scale up quite a bit. I'll bring it to half scale, where I can really see all the details of the cabinetry. And for this view, I'll crop it. And really, let me zoom out so I can see the crop region. Exactly. Thank you, Hal. What's it doing? Show the crop areas. <laughs> zoom on in. I actually split a view there. I don't want to do that. Let me zoom in so I don't split the view. Okay, now ZF to zoom to fit. Okay, I have a much more detailed view of just what's going on in that kitchen area. I can even turn up the level of detail there. Now, it looks all the same to me now, but when we start adding cabinets in there, that'll start making a little bit of a difference. So. Go ahead and create as many different plan views as you need for you know, creating things that work for you and presenting things in the level of detail you need. Okay, Filtering the elements, we've been sort of playing with that a little bit in terms of opening the visibility graphics overrides and turning things on and off for highlighting things. So continue to use that for each of the different views. If you don't need to see the planting and you want to get it out of there because this is going to confuse the matter, turn it off. Cropping and resizing, okay, we've also been playing with that. The big issue with cropping and resizing is, oh, it's that whole thing here where the control has sort of two steps. Do not crop has the little x. If I crop it, the x goes away, but there's also the issue of is the region visible or not? And this is kind of the confusing state. It's cropped, but you can't sort of see the boundary, so you're sort of wondering whether or not it is or it isn't, or just really what's driving that. Now, don't worry about the crop boundary. Even though it shows up as this big blue line here, when you print, it disappears. Okay, so no, one's out, no one else is going to see that crop boundary. It's really just for you. Okay, scale and level of detail. Again, you can change the scale. You can change the level of detail just using the controls down here in the quick access controls. And if you want to show things, course level of detail, for example, doesn't show you all the wall layers. Fine level will show you all the wall layers. Let's think about how that might be useful. The truth is, yeah, if I'm going to go through and do the framing, I probably want to see all those different layers because those layers are meaningful to me. It is actually the stud layer, 
versus the sheetrock layer versus all those different layers. I actually care about those layers when I'm doing the framing. If I'm the cabinet installer, I probably actually don't care about all those layers because to me, it's pretty much I'm putting the cabinet up on the surface of the wall. So for the cabinet installer, maybe instead of showing all that detail, you actually just want to back it off to course because to them, it really is a big gray blob of wall and they just have to hang to it. Okay, so you always got to be thinking about what it is that the person needs to be seeing. Yeah, more detail isn't always better. Okay, now we come to this issue of the view range. And this is the one that's a little bit tricky, but also very powerful. So let's kind of show you what happens here. The idea is every view has a view range. Let me zoom on out a little so you can sort of see. Okay, and by default, view range is, or view range lives under view properties. Let's start with that. I can edit the view range. And here's its default settings. Four feet off the ground, looking down. I'm going to go to seven foot six above my head. Okay, and this one's actually looking a little bit far down. It's going to minus one. I'm going to change that back to zero. It'll be a little bit clearer. And let's think about what we can do with these. Okay, four feet tends to be a very nice elevation because at four feet off the floor, okay, what tends to happen is I cut through doors. I tend to cut through windows. You know, I'll cut through these uh, LCD panels. As I look down, I'll see my countertops and my base cabinets. It's actually, I won't see the upper cabinets because they're above my head right now. They're at four foot six. So four foot's kind of like a little magic number. It's kind of a good height. But it does have a couple problems because if you go through and do things at four feet, some things might be missed. For example, up here, these polycarbonate panels, which you could think of as clear story windows, very high up on the wall. At four feet, I won't be able to see them. And if that's an important architectural feature, that won't show up in the floor plan. Okay, so what can we do? You can go ahead and play around right in here with the idea of how high the cut plane is. So four feet, kind of okay. Let me change it to five feet, apply, still kind of okay. Six feet, not much is changing. Seven feet. Okay, something changed there. You lost your doors. I lost my doors and windows. Or I lost my window. I lost my doors. What do I have to do to lose the windows? Probably like seven foot four. I don't know. It depends on what the head height is. Okay, there we go. Uh oh, I've lost all my doors and windows. What do I do now? Um, they're still there. They're in the model. You just can't see them in this view. Okay. So as we go ahead and try and adjust our cut plane so that we can see some things and not see other things. The danger is you may lose things you want. Okay, I still don't see my clear story windows yet. So let me go ahead and reset that. We'll try a different strategy. I'll just leave it at four. Okay, if I'm gonna go ahead and put some clear story windows in or some windows at a very high elevation, let me just put some in so I can illustrate this for you. I'll say window and let me go for some, oh, let me find some nice little window. I'll just put some little small windows in. I'll put it over here on the wall. Okay, I will take these three windows and I'm going to give them a base height or a sill height that's high, like seven feet tall. Okay, so I can't see them anymore. Here's the deal. I'd like to be able to see those windows, but I'd also like to be able to see this door, and I'd also like to be able to see this door. Okay, I have sort of have a problem. But this is actually a case where that plan region comes in. Okay, what the plan region lets you do is as follows. You can say, take the plan, create a plan region. And what is a plan region? It's really just a little teeny, teeny part of your plan where you say, okay, for this little area, I'm going to adjust the cutting plane to be a different height. Okay, so. I can say, let me say that just for this little piece of the drawing right over here, I'll leave those doors alone, but just that little area right there is going to have a very slightly different set of properties. And what it is is its plan region is going to be, oh, up like at seven foot two. And I'll finish the plan region, okay. And that's sort of the attempt to give you the best of both worlds. So plan regions, use them sort of carefully. Do you really get into those when you're going to have like a split level house and like a floor level is just sort of an off height? 
or you know, clear story windows is another good use. Whenever you're running into something you'd like to show in your plan view and it's just not showing up, kind of in the back of your mind, tickle plan region. Okay, and that's how you can sort of get something a little bit different going on there. Okay, plan regions. Ah, ah, let me show you one thing about sort of above and below in terms of the view range. Let's go to the visibility uh, graph. Uh, well, yeah, let's go to the uh, view range again for the overall thing. There is this notion here of it's the distance between the cut plane and top and the distance from cut plane to bottom. And things that sort of show up in those ranges can have different line styles associated with them. For example, between the cut plane and top gets associated with something called above. There's a line style called above, which is dashed. And you've actually seen that already. For example, when we did the stairs, the part that was above the cut plane showed up as like these dashed lines. Things that are below tend to have like solid lines. But let me just kind of show you what that looks like. If I go through and I place some components, and let me go out, I'm going to load some components. I'll get some base cabinets. And again, I'm going to get them from my little uh, favorite library, the 110 library, and cabinetry is down here. What do I do? Cabinetry. I'll do, oh, I'll do flat panel doors. Let me get some just base cabinets. I can choose some sizes. Check this out. Okay, now I can place some cabinets. These are 24 inch cabinets. I can put them on the wall here. I can try to hug them up. Very often what I do with cabinets, just so you know, when you're placing them is I'll put them in there, then I'll use the align tool. And I'll say really the side of that cabinet wants to hug right up to that. The side of that wants to hug up to there. Actually, it's, this is the surface that that cabinet wants to hug up to. Okay, now these cabinets are all below four feet, so they show up with these nice solid lines. Okay, let me go through, put in some wall cabinets to show you the difference. I'll say component place the components and I'll again go out and load. In this case, I'm going to go through and load. Let's pop out there. <coughs> Cabinetry, some wall cabinets. And where do I want to go? Up to here, raised panel, flat panel, there it is. Some wall cabinets are here. Glass doored wall cabinets. There's some really some cool stuff out there. Um, let me go ahead and put those in. Notice that these show up with dashed lines instead. Okay. The reason they're showing up as dashed lines is they're actually above the cut plane, so they're showing up with the above line style. Okay, and you can control all that. There's actually a line style associated with that. So if you actually want to take a look at that, there's some line styles. And there's beyond, there's overhead. I guess overhead's with the proper name for it. If I want to go through and change it to something else, I can uh, change the color or something like that. Are they green? Yeah, you on the oh, thank you. I'm always bad about that. Yeah, it's, it's very helpful to have you kind of like, uh, kind of watching me that way. Okay, so what's going on? Again, it's here, line styles. Above, where'd it go? Overhead, line color. That should be okay. Ah. Let's see if that makes a difference. Da, 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 da. I think it's going to just invalid. Man, there's something else going on there. And I'll think about that in just a second about why it's not happening. I think of those as being above line style, but there's something else going on that's not making it happen. Right. We won't debug it now. We'll go ahead and figure that one out a little bit later. Okay, so plan regions are good for adjusting things when you need to. Let's go ahead and, oh, just finish out with the whole notion of underlaying. Underlaying, again, is the sort of thing that's very useful for just aligning things between levels. So, for example, on level two, you can see that the underlay is set 
we can actually see through to the items on the first floor. Okay, if we don't want to see through to those, you can turn off that underlay. Again, this is good for a working view. If I was presenting this to someone, I probably would turn those off so they can't see them. And how I do that is view properties and turn off the underlay. Now, here's sort of a just good general rule of thumb. If you find yourself, as you're working, going back and forth to visibility and graphics or view properties more than two or three times, that's a pretty good clue that you might want to duplicate a view okay, and have different sets of settings that let you kind of switch easily between those two different groups. So go ahead and allow that set for yourself. If you keep on running into things and you're always running back and forth to visibility graphics or view properties, you know, set up some duplicates and let yourself work that way. Yes? It is so, so close to that. And that's actually a very good concept. Let me kind of show you. In fact, we are, it's the next one in the set here. It's this whole thing about view templates. And let me show you how that works. The answer is yes. Well, it's not a single command, but it's at least a way of uh, reapplying settings. Because you have this notion that you've created the settings, so you, know, you, you love the settings, you did something very nice for one view, you'd like to apply it to other views too. Okay? So here's how it works. If, for example, I set on this view, oh, I want this to be the quarter scale view, I want to shade it, I want to turn on, oh, a high level of detail. You know, I can even turn on shadows, whatever it is. I can set up all my different settings and really kind of get the view. I'll turn that one off. That doesn't look too good. So I set up things and uh, just get things just the way I like. If that group of settings is one you would like to reapply to many different views, what you can do is actually go to the, under the View tab, this thing called View Templates. And View Templates will actually let you create a template from the current view. What that does, I'll call this just Shaded Floor Plans, is it grabs all those different settings. Oh, you want quarter scale, fine level of detail, any visibility graphic overrides, oh, what should be shown based on time, where is the style, shading with edges. It'll grab all those different settings for you. Okay, put them together under that name so that now if I go back to level one and I want to apply those same settings, I can say apply the template to this view and I can just pop that in there and real quickly get to the same settings. Now, it'll get all the things, shading, uh, level of detail. It won't get cropping. Cropping's still sort of a unique thing for every view. But that's kind of a really nice thing to set up because that actually starts to give you consistency. So if you spend all the time to really get one elevation looking quite, quite good in terms of what's hidden, what's shown, what's shaded, okay, create yourself a template and then use it on the other ones and you get consistency. It'll also help if you're working in a team with several people because then you know they all don't have to set those independently. They can work, and then you can just at the end, boom, 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 kind of make the uh, a view template apply to all those. Yes. No. Yeah. That there's no easy way to copy. Again, sort of crop cropping and zoom are really the two. They're considered unique. Yeah, so they aren't carried across. Okay, let us go ahead and break right there, hop up, kind of stretch out. We'll come back in about five minutes, and when we do, we'll take everything we just sort of learned about plan views and real quickly say, great, if it worked there, it's going to work for elevation sections and 3D views. Okay, so we'll be able to march through a bunch of that really quickly. Just, you know, we're going to keep on doing slightly different things in terms of placing the cameras, but everything else, the visibility graphics, the filtering, the blah, 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 it's going to work exactly the same. Okay, so go ahead and take your break and let me kind of turn this off for a sec and I'll answer some questions over the break. So hang tight.